7.4 Consumer and Producer Surplus We'll begin by looking at consumer surplus. First let's consider our demand function. We found a demand function to be basically the consumer side or how the consumer sees it. We've used in the past D for, for the demand and X for the input. The X for the input for the demand function was really representing the price so we'll go to using P to stand for the input and instead of demand to stand for the demand we're going to use the letter Q for the demand. Now let's take a sample of a demand function. If you remember the demand function when we first were introduced to it, the demand function had the look of a linear equation with a negative slope. Now we're going to treat this as a function q of x with a negative slope. Or q sorry, q of p using p as the input. Now, a few examples. We found that, let's say if we were looking at movie rentals, and if the cost of the movie rental was three bucks um, this week, we can expect, or should I say that day, we can expect to have a demand of 15. 15 would actually leave the shelf. And let's say we found that if we were charging nine dollars for movie rentals that day, only five would leave the shelf. So this says as you input price, the demand goes um, the demand changes. And as you input higher price, the demand goes down. So here, our input, is price whereas the output are the units that actually leave the shelves and go to the um, consumer. We're going to look at the inverse of this function, the demand function. We'll still call it the demand function, but it'll work just a little differently, but have a lot of the same exact characteristics. We're going to use as input the number of units, and the output will be P, the price. Now, graph wise, it'll still go downward, and to demonstrate that, we can see that if five units um, are produced or out there, we can expect from five to sell those for about nine bucks. And if we had 15 units out there, we can expect to sell those at a price of three bucks. It's just that now the quantity or the units is the input and the price is the output. But we still have the same type of fun function. This will now be instead a function of P, or sorry, function of Q. Still the slope is negative. Q is the input. And with this, the input will be units. And the outputs now will represent the price. Now, 
why display uh, the demand function in such a way? Well, from the manufacturer standpoint, uh, this is a little more beneficial. See, from the consumer side, uh, the consumer says, okay, well, if you input $3, if you ask us for $3, we'll buy 15 of them. But if you, if you charge us $9, we'll buy 5. From the, uh, from the manufacturer standpoint, they'll say, hey, if we're able to get 5 units out there, we can charge $9. Once we get 15 units out there for people to purchase, then we know we need to charge $3 for that. Now, why is this necessary? is that sometimes the products come out very very slowly you can only produce so many let's say five at first and then later on you can produce more 15 but you want to get the units out to the market and you want to know what to charge for the five units that you currently have out and since these units are being bought by the people that can afford them at nine bucks um, you're still getting revenue in there is always a group of people that's going to buy your product before the price comes down and that's who you're making sure you know how to charge here rather than charge everyone three dollars no matter if you put five or fifteen out there the people that are buying these products these are our first buyers they're also called the early adapters or early adopters should I say okay they buy your product when there's only a few out there and it's new at no matter what price that you give for instance when the CD came out a CD player probably ran about 500 bucks well the, there weren't many out there but the consumers, um, the average person, did not have enough money to pay $500. But the radio companies um, and anyone that dealt with um, communication, they paid the $500. Now, when we buy CD players, we can expect to pay about maybe 50 bucks, or even less. But that's because they're now they're more abundant.